What's up? And welcome to episode 132 of Throwback Hoops. My name is Rob Clayton, and I'm joined as always by my co-host and my main man, Woody V. What's happening, brother? 100, 132 episodes. That's a good effort, man. They're, they're ticking along. Not bad, is it? Always Not bad. Back, as we bro. sort of mentioned, it's like the fourth season of the fourth season, I think, of doing these NBL previews. Yes. I know we've been looking yeah. forward to these ones. So, well, just before we introduce our special guest, just a reminder: please make sure you like, rate, and subscribe to us um, on YouTube. Really appreciate everyone's support. Um, and now it's time to introduce a special guest, Wood. So we are thrilled to have him on for his fourth appearance on Throwback Hoops. Um, and look, this is a guy that's more than a guest. He's someone that both Woody and I both consider a friend. It is a huge Throwback Hoops welcome to Mookie Skirelli. Guys, thank you. It's it's like coming home. I feel very <laughs> welcome. And, uh, you know, as I've told you guys, there's, there's no better podcast out, out there that hits my sweet spot in terms of all those aspects about basketball that I love. So, yeah, love watching and listening to you guys and uh even better to be involved uh, great to have you back mate and looking forward to it. we've got a lot to talk about today we've got some nbl previews um got some interesting sort of quick hit stuff at the end and of course we've got a, a pack of cards to open which will be fun so well um we might as well start off as we always do and that's of course to to show our jerseys right so um maybe we'll start off with the special guest um mookie what you got for us well uh I'm, I'm gonna, as as I tend to do, let you guys have a, have a bit of a guess when I, when I show it to you, and partly because I like you to guess, and partly because I'm sitting in quite close quarters in a bit of a little podcast booth here, so so I'm not going to be able to show you the back. So I'm going to show you the front and see how you guys go. I know you guys kill it at this game, so so let's see. Oh, Jermaine O'Neal. No, no. Uh, Next guess. Five. No googling woods. I can see you typing away there. <laughs> yeah, no, um, I'm, not, I'm not doing that. Number five. Number five. I like it. That's a random one. It's. Am so, I thinking uh, it's probably like uh, late noughties around that era? Are we talking that that sort of time? Or yeah, yep, yep. yep. Um, uh, Rudy Fernandez. Very good. Ooh, nice. Very good. <laughs> very there good. you go. Very good. You are recent, good. recently good. retired. Rudy Fernandez. Exactly. Well. Yeah. Right, that's so, a very yeah. nice jersey to have. Respect for that one. Yeah, thanks. I actually uh, just picked this up a couple of weeks ago in Portland. I was seeking through the uh, the stores there. Some amazing stuff there you guys awesome. would love, all, all the bobbleheads and those things. And uh, uh, that was kind of one of my two favorite eras in Portland Trailblazers basketball. Of course, I, I first got into the Blazers around 92 with Drexler, Porter, Duckworth, Buck Williams, Jerome Kersey, those guys. Uncle and Cliff. Uncle Cliffy, Rod Strickland, yeah. Danny Ainge, all those guys. Yeah. Yeah. And then uh, I, the, the second era for me that was really important was around that, yeah, 2007 sort of era. And um, that was not long after I, I started uh, a stern warning back in about 2006. And then we, I was super excited to see Paddy Mills join the Blazers. And he was part of that crew where we had Brandon Roy, LaMarcus Aldridge, Greg Oden, Nicholas Batum, Wes Matthews, Wes Matthews, yep, and and, uh, and then guys like you know Rudy Fernandez, Sergio Rodriguez came along, and they're a really fun crew of guys. And of course, was, uh, Paddy Mills was my favorite player, and to see him on the Blazers and with that little group of guys who got on really well. Rudy was one of those guys who got on really well with them. I expected a lot out of Rudy Fernandez coming into the league. I, he wasn't that highly rated, but his combination of three point shooting and athleticism, he, he was. You know, a bit of a dunker showed off those those dunk skills in in uh, the dunk comp, and he he didn't make the impact we were hoping for in in the NBA, but of course has had a huge career going back to Europe. And thirty nine years old has just uh, finished up in the Olympics now, and um, you know done some wonderful things back in Spain. Um, yeah, as I say, great great stalwart for the Spanish club, the team and. And all the things he's done uh, professionally. So, yeah, six five guard, um, just uh, had had a bit of it all and a little bit of flair. So, thought I'd pay tribute. And, and Mookie, uh, if, if I look back to that that era you mentioned, we talk about Rudy Fernandez coming here from Europe. He actually struggled to assimilate and and adapt a lifestyle in the US. It wasn't until Patty actually came and joined that Portland team that he had a buddy that he could lean on. Both of them were trying to find their feet. They were, you know, similar ages. 
um, and having one another was really good. So I think a, a, a part of why he didn't have that success here in the uh, well, in the NBA was adapting to the lifestyle that an NBA player has to li- live mo- moving from Europe potentially, you know? Yeah, good call. Absolutely. And, and they did find that little crew as, as anyone who has gone and worked in another place knows and you get your little gang of people together yeah. and, and they had that little international crew together that, yeah. that really got on and it was, it was really cool. Hey, Mookie, what's Portland like as a city? Really chilled, laid back, uh, oh. kind of accepting of everyone. Uh, it's it's like uh, for, for anyone who is either from Sydney or Melbourne, it's kind of like Newtown or, or Brunswick or Fitzroy, but just a big version of it spread out. Um, lots of cool little hipster cafes and all that. It's uh, very easy to drive around because there's not too much traffic and... Uh, yeah, people are very friendly. They uh, they're, they're all about nature. You have got a lot of green space just outside of Portland, and uh, it was great after following the Blazers for thirty two years to finally visit Portland. So we both got our sort of dreams, didn't we, this year? Woods and I got yeah. to go to Atlanta. You got to go to yeah. Portland. So very cool. Exactly. Uh, loving yeah. the choice of jerseys. You know, we love the random ones. I mean, look, love you it. could have come on with some name sort of player, but for one that you know, I got it on the second guess, it wasn't too bad. But that's that's I'm one I've got to have in the collection as well. I'm loving that one. So did well. good work. Um, all right, over to yourself, Woods. Um, you're rocking the the Tigers and Hawks uh, combo today. What you got? Yes. Look, on episode three when we had Coach Hesh on one of our first episodes, I wore a replica of this jersey. Mm. But I was just going through all my jerseys, arranging them last week or so, and I, I found this at the bottom of the pile. This is actually from about 1993 or 1994. It's an original, so check it out. Oh, so what are you standing up rocking the old school and our Copeland Melbourne oh, Tigers jersey? Look at that. All um, stitched on, the original. You know, it's not fitting in too well, but it looks really good. Hey, yeah. I, couldn't, I couldn't fit any jerseys from back in that era, so uh, I'm impressed. I got this when I was about 12, 13. I just can't remember who gave it to me. Maybe it was my cousins coming from Melbourne or we went to a Kings game in Melbourne once, I think. I just don't remember. But um, instead of going through all these accolades and talking about Leonard Copeland, which I've done in the past on this show before, I thought I'd throw it out to you you guys. Maybe I'll start with you, Muki. I mean, growing up as a kid, me and my brother, we were trying to be gays and Copeland in the backyard. You know, it wasn't Stockton and Malone or, or Pippen and Jordan. They were icons. And any kid who loved basketball at that period, uh, you know, had an affinity to, towards Gaze and Copeland as the dynamic duo in Australian basketball. When we look back on Leonard Copeland and think about the impact he's had on the game in this country, what will you say? What will you say about Leonard Copeland? For me, he, he's one of those guys who really made you think, well, the NBL and the NBA, there isn't too much of a leap. Because you know, I remember back when I first started collecting cards and getting a you know a Leonard Copeland Clippers card and 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 then seeing him there in in the league and you see him and Gaze playing at such a high level and you know he was he was an NBA player who was there with uh, Charles Barkley That's in like Philadelphia yeah. and uh, and you just think well that level they were playing at at the same time as the the height of Michael Jordan in the NBA and along with the, the likes of Dwayne McLean in Sydney, just made me feel like, wow, Razzle Dazzle Showtime, just the stuff he did. And the, the other thing about Copes, uh, as with gays, they weren't guys that you could really hate because they were just such such nice uh, guys, wholesome, great competitors who were never dirty. So uh, a lot of respect. Yeah, totally. I agree with you, Muki. And uh, Lee Ellis was recently on a podcast with, with uh, Charles Buckley and Charles Buckley said, man, I've got a friend, his name's Leonard, right? Uh, yeah. Yeah, that's a friend of ours as well. And uh, he went to Australia. He said he's going to go play for a bit there. He has not come back. He's He's been here ever since. So <laughs> he started that long line of um, Americans that came here in the late 80s, early 90s that have stayed, stayed on. Um, and maybe I'll throw to you, Robbie. He has a bit of a polarizing figure in terms of the work he does in the media, but I, I like him. You know, you know, we need someone who's willing to voice a different opinion and be a bit out there. So I'm, uh, a secret um, guilty pleasure of mine is Gaze and Copeland and the mic as well. So I just wanted to get your thoughts on what you what you think about him as a, as a broadcaster. Yeah, I like him. Um, you know, he's got some interesting opinions sometimes. Um, I sort of, you know, I like the way he sounds. And he's got some, he sort of makes you laugh with some of the stuff he says. But, you know, obviously really respect, you know, his knowledge for the game as well. So when he when he talks, you want to listen to what he's saying there, I guess. So, no, I think he's been good. I think he's been good on um, on NBL overtime. He comes up with some funny opinions and stuff like that. So, um, but you're right. When when it's him and Gaze together, you know they're just going to, you know, tease yeah. each other the whole time and have a joke. And, yeah, it's always always fun to listen to that. 
Awesome. Thanks, guys. Awesome. No, I appreciate that. Nice old school one. So, all right, we'll all finish it off. So, look, as I've done on every episode that Mookie's been on now, I've rocked a Portland Trailblazers jersey. So, um, as I mentioned to him before we started recording, this might be the last one. I do have a Nick Van Exel somewhere that definitely doesn't fit me, which is a pretty random one. So, um, I'll stand up and show you the one I'm rocking today. Um, little clue is it's number 33, but, of course, it isn't that prick Scotty Pippen. So, I'll stand up and show you who it is. <laughs> Uh, for all our audio listeners that can't see, Robbie's wearing the number 33, Sharif Abu Rahim. Abu Rahim. Yeah, well, wow. like old school, man. right? Yeah, yeah. Man, I, love, I love that. So know a lot of people would, would assume it would be Scotty Pippen. No, definitely not. Um, and look, look, I have featured, so I should say, so it's a um, Sharif Abdul Rahim Red Portland Trailblazers Reebok Edition jersey. So I don't have a lot of these Reebok ones. They're pretty, pretty random, weird sizing. They're not like probably my favourite sort of fitted jerseys. I like the look of this one. Um, I have featured this guy before, though, you might remember, boys. So I had a couple of his Hawks jerseys back in the day. I think maybe a yellow one and a white one. So that's got to did the whole sort of story about him there. Um, look, I might totally go through his career. Um, you probably remember, Mickey, he only had a, st- a short stint with the Blazers, so he was there during the 04 and 05 seasons. Um, true to form for Abdurrahim, he didn't make the playoffs. Um, yeah. Of course, fun fact about him, so he only made one playoff series in 13 seasons. Um, Sacramento. Was, exactly. Loading his career with Sacramento. Um, I didn't know this as well, but he actually holds the NBA record for the lowest plus minus for any player in his career. So wow. minus 2,904 is his plus minus there. So it's still the lowest ever. So just unbelievable how little sort of wins he's had. Um, he's now the president of the G League and he's very much respected and everything else like that. So look, you can't, um, hold that sort of stuff against, against him there. Um, interesting fact, he actually arrived in Portland after a trade from my Hawks. So do either of you guys remember who that trade involved there? So it was an Atlanta and Portland trade, mm. trade that basically um, ended up with Sharif going to Portland. Was that? I have worn one of the guys that came from the Hawks jerseys before, but it may be my most obscure ever Hawks jersey. A white guy with a DD initials. Oh, Dan Dickow. Dan, Dan, Dan Dickow. Dickow. Yep. Love Dan yep. Dickow. Wow. Dan Dickow. So, look, essentially the trade. So, Hawks um, traded uh, Dan Dickow and Theo Ratliff, who was someone I did quite like back in the day, yeah. Yeah. Um, for Wesley Person and Rasheed Wallace, who, of course, went on to play one game for the Hawks and then ended up leaving after the one game. So, yeah, pretty pretty <laughs> random trade, that one, wasn't it? Absolutely. Super random. That, yeah. that's, that's a cool one. And, and I like that you picked that guy out because – a lot of people mm. would have forgotten that he played for the Blazers. 100%. Well, let's go over to you, Mookie. What were your sort of memories of Abdurrahim um, in his time with the Blazers and, I guess, his career there? Yeah, well, in general, like, he was a guy who he seemed like a, a pretty wholesome sort of player. Uh, seems like we've got a theme going on here. Um, he he um, was, was that guy who came into the league with a lot of potential. He was along the lines of some of those other power forwards. You're kind of in that level of like a, you're expecting like a, a Derek Coleman sort of level of player or a Vin Baker. Um, and just, yeah, probably never got to the heights that he could have. He was part of a, a strong draft class from memory. And the um, his time in Portland, yeah, was during a period where it, it was kind of... Um, yeah, like a middle ground for the Blazers. Where was that post like, post jail Blazers? I think just after that was it, or yeah, or maybe on the tail yeah. end. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. It was starting to. So he wouldn't have fit in there being a good person in that jail no, Blazers team, right? <laughs> exactly, and then maybe that was an intentional uh, mm. trade to get a guy in who who had that that sort of persona, and uh, yeah, one of those guys who was yeah a good player, but also not a guy where you felt like yeah we're we're a championship contender. Uh, obviously, with his his uh, win loss, <laughs> poor guy. Yeah, I mean that's a crazy record, isn't it? Look, obviously not all his fault there. He did play on some teams that, you yeah. know, those young sort of Grizzlies teams back in the day. Yeah. That stage when he was with the Hawks, the Hawks were awful. It was that period then when they were really bad there. So, um, but yeah, thought it was an interesting bit of a trip down memory lane. So, well, three very different jerseys. So Rudy Fernandez, Leonardo Copeland, and Sharif Abdurrahim. So, um, enjoying that one, fellas. Like so, yeah, absolutely. All right. Well, let's get into some NBL previews. So, of course, we did start this off last week, and we did the two Queensland teams, um, Brisbane and Cairns. Um, had a lot of good feedback about that. People send us and enjoy what we're talking about. So we've done a little bit of homework each this week. Uh, we're going to cover one team each. So the teams we're going to cover this week are South East Melbourne, Melbourne, and then finish off with Illawarra. So, Mookie, we've given you the job. We'll get you up first, um, and you're going to do a bit of a preview on South East Melbourne. Yeah, good stuff. 
So, That's uh, four Mookie gets away. Yeah, Woody's putting out one of his amazing slides. I know he's been working on it all week. So I'll just quickly go through that and then let Mookie get into it. So, of course, the, the Phoenix are coached by Mike Kelly. Um, so, look, I could probably read out all these names. I might not because I might be here all night. But this is one of the biggest turnovers of, of teams we've seen there. Um, I guess some of the key signings, um, Angus Glover, Derek Walton Jr., who've both previously had time with Sydney there. Um, they've got a couple of imports, which I'll let Mookie talk about. Um, Majok Majok, they got over from um, Tassie. Um, and look, probably the big one was Nathan Sobey, right? So getting a you know really A-grade level Aussie talent going to the team. Um, the part of list is a bit concerning, though. So the main names there, obviously, the imports, Alan Williams and Gary Brown, um, Gorjak Gak, um, and sort of Reese Fagan, and Ruben Terengi, some of the bench guys there. So uh, potential depth, depth, depth chart as we got it. So starting five would be Walton Jr., Nathan Sobey, um, Joe Wieskamp, um, Matthew Hurt, or Matt Hurt, and um, Jordy Hunter. So a bit of a connection to your Kings there, Mookie. But, yeah, what's your, what's your thoughts on this Phoenix team? Mm. Yeah, so the, the first thing, as you say, as as a, a Kings fan, the, there's definitely that Kings connection with those three guys: Jordy Hunter, Angus Glover, and Derek Walton Jr. The 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 latter two, um, I guess, being the, the the most recent additions. Jordan Hunter, of course, was um, talked about as as a guy that the Kings really wanted to keep, but couldn't maybe um, stick to the the ideals that he had looking at possibly playing in Japan and having out clauses for that and whereas Southeast Melbourne had the appetite to to go for that and yeah he was a guy that I was disappointed to see leave he's, he's a guy who will do great things and I, I just will be interested to see how he fits in Southeast Melbourne whether he gets more touches than what he had in Sydney because in Sydney he, he made his own bed um, which was you know he, he did all the hard work to get the shots that he did. Um, so we're interested to see. Of course, having Derek Walton Jr. there, an experienced point guard, is a smart move by them. Uh, a guy who, you know, really sets the table for people, um, can score, can pass, uh, will bo- do both of those things uh, as as the need arises. Um, pretty gutsy and, and uh, you know, a leader who's who's been around. He's been played in a lot of countries and, and um, and has played in the league before, so you already know what you're getting. So he, he's a great signing for them. I think that's going to make a big difference because, as you say, such a turnover of, of players. You, you you go through the list of of uh, who they had uh, in previous, like the the top contributors from prior year: Mitch Creek, Al Williams, Will Cummings, Abdul Nader, Tyler Cook, Gary Brown. You, you've got a hot, everyone. The top of that list is gone. And uh, it was it was a tough situation for them with um, Mitch Creek leaving after having uh, been such a, a talisman of the team for such a long time. And a lot of people saw that incoming Nathan Sobey, seeing them team up again, of course, mates and former teammates from Adelaide and whether that was going to be a, a dynamic duo. But, of course, many people also saw wind of, of Creek leaving and uh, exploring his age opportunities and good on him for having a crack at that. Um, he's He's been, you know, consistently one of the the top performers in the NBL for yeah. some years now. So that's that's a big loss for them for a team that already struggled. And, of course, last season was largely on the back of injuries. They had some terrible luck with that. So mm. they'll, they, they could pick up a lot of wins this season just by having some health luck. Uh, but to go through the, the players there, you know, of course, Derek Walton Jr., as I said, is going to be a great table setter. Nathan Sobey doesn't need to play the point guard, and we're, there's often that, that whole conversation about Sobey being in the shooting guard role is better for him to, to be out there slashing and not having to, um, you know, set up other players. So, Hey, Mookie, are you a fan of Sobey? I know he's a bit of a polarising player around the league. Uh, I, won't, I wouldn't say a fan. Um, mm-hmm. uh, one thing I, I really notice, and I've never done the stats on this, I'd love someone to do it, is to just analyse on the plays where he hits the floor after going for a shot attempt, what the, the turnaround on numbers are because I feel like on a very large percentage of plays where Nathan Sobey goes hard at the rim and all credit to him that he really pushes hard and puts his body in the line but he quite often hits the floor and then it's five on four down the other end well, that's because well, he's, he's complaining at the ref. Yeah, yeah, we've said, yeah. That. We've said yeah. that before, man. I think he's got a mate that plays for the Mavericks, maybe, as well. It does something similar. <laughs> a much larger, a mm. larger mate who's mm. a bit beefier. Yeah, yeah, that's right. And 
he, he's a hell of a competitor. Yep. Um, and, and I think in the right system, he could do really well. Like, you know, when he was on the boomers and, and just really tr- trying really hard to fit a role, he, he did such a good job. But the problem for Nathan is, you know, rightly so, because he's such a great player. He's often the guy that teams rely upon. And, and if, if you're relying on him to create, it can be a bit inconsistent. But yeah, that, that whole issue of, of just feeling like quite often, <laughs> like I say, I'd like to see the stats of him on the floor. Um, yeah. He's um he's he's a bit like a, a Russell Westbrook for me, an NBL Russell Westbrook, athletic um, tweener guard who um, goes drives hard and, and fights hard in every possession, and and I'm sure his teammates appreciate that. I'm sure at times um, he probably pushes them hard as well. Uh, it's it's a big um, question mark for Southeast Melbourne when it comes to the imports, yeah. right? So the they've brought in. Uh, a trio of, of guys with G League experience, um, and uh, two of which kind of with that marginal NBA experience as well. So we look at those guys in, in the forwards there. So Joe Wieskamp, who uh, I believe is six foot six, uh, who, who played for Maine. I think he was he was drafted by San Antonio Spurs, um, and yeah, he, he's there's there's not anything spectacular about his game from what I see. I have to admit I'm, I'm not extremely knowledgeable on, on him, but from what I've researched, um, you know, he seems like he's a solid solid all-round player. What he's going to do specifically for Southeast Melbourne, we'll, we'll wait and see, but obviously ha- had some had some uh, weight behind him in, in getting drafted and, and having that experience he's had with San Antonio and, and the Austin Spurs and then with Wisconsin and Toronto Raptors and, and then getting with Maine and the Texas Legends. So he's been around and, and so there's there's definitely been a lot of basketball minds who see a lot out of him and you never know, right, how NBA or G League trans, translates mm-hmm. to NBL. It, um, it varies a lot in both directions. Sometimes you can get a guy who's just suited to the NBL and comes in and, and is, a, is a great player. So, yeah, what about you guys in terms of Wieskamp? Have you seen much of him? Yeah, I mean, he's a, he's a solid shooter, right? Uh, he comes in with that pedigree. Um, he can make an open shot. I guess it, it always remains to be seen, as you said, with these guys. Is it going to translate that game to the NBL? Um, is he going to be a good teammate? I think Coach Mike Kelly, you know, um, he, he'd, he'd be very smart in how he recruited his players to fit into his system. So I think we rely yeah. on Mike Kelly in the front office there at Southeast Melbourne, uh, Tommy Greer and all those guys to have mm-hmm. picked the right candidates. Uh, to come into that system. My biggest question is, you look at Alan Williams, you look at Mitch Creek, you mentioned, right? These guys are the spiritual leaders of the team, heart and soul of this team, right? Yeah. When you take those two guys out of the lineup, who's going to come in and be those leaders in the locker room now? Tell me, Mookie. Yeah, yeah, exactly. It's going to be Nathan Sobey, but I think he's a kind of a quieter sort of guy too. So you're going to actually have uh, quite possibly, coming from the bench crew with Air and Glover, being those real fiery guys, but they're, they're also the guys who I was going to question, you know, um, being such fiery competitors, could they be the first uh, teammates to have a, a bit of a scuffle in training? Interesting. Yeah. yeah. I mean, Angus Glover as well, he's got a chip on his shoulder. You know, the last season he had with our, with our Kings Mookie wasn't the most pleasant one. So yeah. he's got a point to prove. So I expect some big things from Angus Glover. Hey, he's balled out in the NBL one as well. So he's, yeah. he's coming yeah. out looking good. He's yeah. ready. He's ready. And, and yeah. you know, we know he's a hell of a player. We've seen what he, he's done for the Kings. Um, NBL finals, you know, we, we've seen. And obviously last season he felt hard done by and not getting the minutes and he made that known and and a lot of fans were, were behind that same line of thought. So uh, what will he do? Will he remain as, say, a sixth man sort of role? It would be interesting to see, depending on how the performance of other players on the roster and, of course, injuries. But he's a definitely an impact guy. And if he gets that confidence in his shot back, because that was the issue for him at the start of last season in the NBL for the Kings, that he just couldn't get his shot going and that kind of deteriorated from there. But if he can get his shot going, he could be a real impact player off the bench for them. Hey, he's got to get open. Who's going to find him? Derek Walton's going to do it, I guess. Yeah, and, and a guy who he's played with before. Exactly. So that and of course there's a lot of gravitational pull around Nathan Sobey so that that's that's sure. a, a good thing for him as well so yeah th- those those three guys Walton um, Sobey and, and Glover I'm expecting a lot of output out of them offensively out of the backcourt and then 
you know, when we, we look to the front court, uh, of course, we've we've got uh, Weiss Camp, as mentioned, Matt Kenyon, who comes in and fills a good sort of a 3 and D role off, off the bench. Uh, Matt Hurt's going to be an interesting one. Once again, another uh, G League uh, experienced guy. And um, he's uh, been with Memphis Grizzlies and their G League affiliate, Memphis Hustle. Uh, and, and he did really well there. He most recently averaged 20.7 rebounds and shot over 50% from the field. Six foot nine can fill the four and the five, they're saying, um, and, and has a, a good three point percentage. So uh, he's, he's a dookie. Duke guy, so got that yeah. pedigree behind him as well. So maybe he can, uh, you know, rustle a few feathers that way. Definitely going to say I've got a lot more confidence in Hurt and what he's going to bring to the table. Looking at his pedigree, what he's done, uh, Wise Camp remains a bit of a um, unknown commodity. Let's say. Yeah, that's right. I mean, yeah, Hurt's got some, I guess, some interesting connections with uh, with uh, Jack White. Uh, yep. having that Duke and Memphis and, yep. Yep, connection. So similar size guys. So yeah, we might see some battles between those guys this season. Uh, and yeah, Jordy Hunter, I'm expecting some good things out of him. We know he can anchor the D. He's a really good communicator. He's a really high IQ guy, a very smart guy who, uh, you know, as he says, would, would prefer to probably be writing TV shows um, rather than playing basketball. But yeah, he, he's he's been he's written a whole script, I think, for or at least a pilot for a TV show during COVID. So uh, when he had injury problems, so he's he's a really smart guy, different type of cat, and he he's a he's a good sort of locker room leader as well, and a good anchor for the team. So I think you know he's starting out his career battling Andrew Bogut in training and all those things has served him well, and I can see him taking that next step in really serving as a true veteran in the NBL this sure. season. For sure. Yeah. And Southeast Melbourne have got, you know, a bit of that X factor in their bench crew. You know, you've got Owen Foxwell as well. So um, they've, they've got Luke Fennell coming in who, uh, you yeah. know, we've, we've seen him in NBL. We've commentated him, haven't we, Mookie? Yep. Yeah. You know, sure See how we play, yep. Yeah. Plenty, of, plenty of potential. And, you know, he, he's, uh, I, you know, depending on which uh, source you look at, he's, he's about six five and a half, something like that. But he's a guy who goes hard at downhill at the rim. You know, can can make some impact. So they've got a bunch of those guys. When you include air in that bunch, particularly the guard positions, who can really sort of churn things up and change pace as they come in the game. So the question marks are more so in in those forward positions. So where do you uh, see these guys finishing? You reckon this year? Somewhere well below the halfway mark. Mm. And my uh, second question to that, like assuming they don't make the playoffs, probably like we'd all expect there, is that going to be all over for Mike Kelly? That would be, you know, probably another season of disappointment there. I know they had injuries last season. Maybe that was an excuse. We had Laura but... coming last last year. Remember that? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Interesting. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I mean, obviously that they, they finished pretty much last in, in – the, every key metric last season, mm. and uh, and you know we, we, we yeah we, we expected the likes of Illawarra to do that, but it it's become a, a bit of a trend lately. Something that wasn't as big previously in the NBL to see mid season coach sackings, and and we we're getting a bit Americanized or a bit twenty four hour news cycleized in the NBL with the amount of media that is pumped out on a daily basis which is you know great that the nbl has that nbl media themselves and all the other independent media sources across the nbl landscape so that builds that pressure bubble in the same way as like the afl gets or the nba gets where you've got so much pressure and that, that could cause if they do have a really bad start maybe mike kelly's under pressure immediately mm. uh and uh you know maybe scott ninas will step in and take his job <laughs> Nice, nice. I appreciate that, uh, Mookie. Um, Woods, what would have to go right for Southeast to make the playoffs? You reckon, like everything? I've got him. I've got him at twelve and sixteen. That was my prediction. Yeah, right? that's about right in terms of what Mookie said, right? Yeah, so, yeah, yeah. And I think, like we said last week, even when we we're talking about Brisbane, it feels like a lot of those teams maybe in the positions around there have improved. I don't know. I mean, this is obviously a work in progress. It's hard to probably. Um, Say so if they have improved, they're not giving it such a new roster. But just looking at that, losing, you know, 
Al Williams losing Mitch Creek, like we said, one of the most you know dynamic duos in the league. It's going to be tough, but um, yeah, looking forward to see how they go. Um, but yeah, no, I really appreciate that one, mate. I can tell you've done your research. Um, you did go to Melbourne last week, so I wasn't sure if that was just a scouting trip about the Phoenix area, whether that was for, for pleasure, but you did a good job. Right, yeah, I put in the hard yards for you guys, but <laughs> I have to say that the only team I did see in Melbourne was the Brisbane Bullets, who passed me at the at Melbourne Airport. We're going wow. down to play a game which is in progress right now as we yeah, right. this, yeah, yeah. yeah. And, nice. and and when I had a look Brisbane was well up so I think I did the right thing by them in those little tips <laughs> I handled as we walk past nice well appreciate that well look I'll take us away um, next I'm going to do my second um, team preview for the season that's uh, Melbourne United so Woods is going to chuck that uh, roster and depth chart up and who's going to speak about that one yeah I'll just go through the the team and then you can take it away, Rob. So the 24-25 roster, Dean Bickerman returns as head coach. Um, still contracted, Campbell Blog, uh, CG, Flynn Cameron, Ian Clark returns, Carl Bowen, Matthew Delavadova, Shea Ali, Tanner Krebs, Tom Coppins, and Rob Rob Lowe coming out of retirement. So, look, they've kept this nucleus together. Um, where they're really going to um, have to fill some gaps is Ariel Huckporty leaving, uh, Joe Lualichul leaving, Luke Travis leaving. You're, you're really... Um, have three big gaps to fill. And you look at that depth chart, you got Shea Ely, Matthew Delavadova, Chris Golding, Jack White, and Marcus Lee returning back to Melbourne where he started his NBL career. And then off the bench, you got Flynn Cameron, Ian Clark, Tanner Krebs, you know, Carl Bowen, Rob Lowe, Tanner Krebs, etc. So it um, looks like a strong side, but they do have the issue of having to replace three very important pieces, Robbie. Definitely. I mean, look, there's not a lot of movement there, but the movement there, like you said, were certainly key pieces. So, um, look, I mean, Melbourne had a really good season last year. They were minor premiers. They ended up going 20-8 and eight, uh, before going down to the Jack Jumpers and some Jack McVeigh magic in the finals there. So this was actually a five-game regular season improvement on the previous season. So it was certainly a good season, 20-8. and eight. I mean, anyone will take that, right? Um, and look, despite some of these big losses that we mentioned, I really expect United to remain one of the teams to beat this season. Um, I like it. They have retained a number of core players. Um, and look, they've no doubt got the best defensive backcourt in the league, in my opinion, behind um, Shea Ely and Delhi. Um, they've got very good guards in general, actually. So they've got a spark off the bench in, in veteran American Ian Clark um, and another veteran in CG43 who you know certainly provide high scoring and really open things up with being such a threat from long range. Um, you mentioned those new guys coming in, Woods. Um, two really good replacements replacing perhaps the big three that left there um the thing i like about this for united it's going to be very easy to fit um these two guys in because they're returning players um in big men jack white and import marcus lee so maybe i'll start with jack white there um so look we've seen him get an nba ring uh, with denver and then play a fair bit in the g league um i honestly think he's going to return an even better player than what we saw um a much improved outside shot, I think, will be the, the main sort of one there. Um, he's someone that was probably pretty close to getting that Olympic spot there. I know we didn't have him in our teams. Woods, he was probably an easy admission, admission there, but, you know, had there been an injury or two there, he would have made it. I'm sure he would have been pretty good there. He's got a, a, certainly a good defensive player and good at both ends there. Um, maybe I'll throw a quick question to... To you guys there, I mean, just in terms of what impact you think Jack White will have. Um, so, Mooks, what, what are your thoughts on that? What sort of impact can you see him having for him? Yeah, well, like you said, I, I think the experience he's built up, having gone overseas and, and had the NBA run that he's had, it, it cannot be understated. The, the amount of experience he's had amongst some real winning players, like the guys in the Denver Nuggets, and just being around high-level coaches, understanding himself a bit more, maturing. He's already a mature guy, but yeah. just adding to that because he's an intelligent guy who seemingly looks to develop himself at all times. So I think he's really has taken on a lot. And he's he already had a, quite a well-rounded skill set, but I think, you know, one area you, you'd like to see him maybe be able to, or two areas you'd like to see him be able to do more of is, is hitting the three consistently and the other one is probably being a ball handler because at the NBL level, a, a four-man mm -hmm. who can really get out and run with the ball is, is a powerful thing. And, and I think at the NBL level, with the, the pace being that, 0.5% slower than the NBA, he'll just have those opportunities, have a bit more time and space to do those things well. And we already know he can get up, he can play great D, and he's a good leader in the locker room. So I think he's going to be very dominant. Um, that's not to say that he's going to put out uh, world-breaking numbers because he's got, as you mentioned, those guards on the team who are just really dominant. It's a stacked team. But the, mm -hmm. his impact on winning will, will be big, I think. Well, that one with numbers, Mookie, you know, or maybe I'll ask you, Woods. I have, have heard some people maybe throw his name into the MVP consideration. I thought that was a little bit interesting there. I know they've normally got some guys at the top there, but what's your thoughts on, on that? 
let's not forget when this guy went to the G League when he was at Denver, he put up gaudy numbers, right? Mm, he had the opportunity yeah. to do that. He was also the number one overall pick in the G League draft. I mean, yeah. this guy is a borderline NBA player, right? But in that G League, he had the opportunity to put up those numbers. But as Mookie said, he's going to have to play more of a role in that Vickerman system, do what the team needs him to do. And that's within his character. That is the kind of man he is. He doesn't mind having to do all those things. But I think this is a real point in his career where it's, if he can really prove himself, have a great season in the NBL, I do believe he has a shot to make it to the league. But it has yeah. to happen in the next year or two or, uh, you know, time may pass him by. So and we know there's a lot of... Well, there's a lot of eyes on the yes. NBL, as we keep sort of mentioning now. So you're right. If he can go out, show some of those leadership skills, you know, ball handling skills, like Mookie said, continue to you know knock down this shot and, and potentially even be a bit of a three and D role playing type guy. I don't see any reason with his um, his character and everything else like that that he could get back. So that'll be interesting. Um, look, it seems like Melbourne sort of have some of these great players and they leave. Um, I know they were obviously disappointed to see Luke Travis leave. Um, as far as I know, he still hasn't signed anywhere. I know he's, Cleveland still hold his rights there. Not quite sure if that's going to end up happening, but um. Well, look, the other one, um, you know, I mentioned returning players there. So uh, Marcus Lee. Um, so, look, I thought that was really, really good getting him back, you know, where his career started there. So, um, obviously, he, he was with the Jack Jumpers last year. Um, I can really see him fitting well. I can already just sort of picturing him, you know, throwing down some massive value um, dunks from Delhi there and, you know, protecting the rim and everything as well. So I like him and Jack White together in tandem there, sort of, you know, one can play a little bit more outside than the other one. Both are going to protect the rim. Um I think with Marcus Lee, you know what you're going to get, right? You're not going to get anything too flashy. He's not going to handle the ball. He's not really going to shoot from the outside. But I think you probably need someone like that on this team there. Um, and probably going back to those guards there, um, we talked about character and everything else like that. Everyone just raves um, about Ian Clark there. Um, apparently, he's done a lot of development for you know some of their... Um, the guys like um, you know Foxwell and sort of other guys on the bench and stuff like that. So... He's someone that knows his role. He's a proven winner there, and he's happy to be that six man. He knows role. the so NBL as well. Let's he really does. That, I mean, right? he's you know, third, <laughs> the three teams he would have played for, you know, now as well, and he's certainly had success there. So, like I said, I love their guards they've got on this team. Um, obviously, at this stage, they don't have a next star player, so they could be in the um, Roman Sapphire um, sweepstakes. Um, what did I say? Woods Roman wasn't built in a day in Tasmania, like yeah. that little that little pun last week. Um, so, you know, they lost like Porty to the NBA and the Knicks there. Um, quite like some of the younger players on this roster though so they've got players like former St Mary's Gale Kyle Bowen um, coming off a great NBL 1 season he was the Nationals finals MVP um, and Flynn Cameron I think he's probably due for a big year as well um, the son of a gun there so I think he'll get some some minutes there um, I honestly think both of those two could end up starters in this league in the near future maybe the next sort of two to three years they could both you know perhaps get starter roles there so look I definitely think this is a top four team. There's no doubt about that. I wouldn't have them any lower than fourth. Um, not quite sure they'll match that 20 and eight record. Um, I think the Kings have got out their checkbook and, and bought pretty well. So I think they're going to possibly move up. We could do a Come whole on, episode man. on that. I don't know. They got the best account. Look who you're talking seen. to here. Look who uh, you're talking to. Mate, here. have you looked at your roster? <laughs> Ridiculous, honestly. Um, but look, I, I think top four and, and look, you know, maybe likely, you know, top two or what I thought there. So I'm going to predict him to go 18 and 10. Um, so probably 18 and 10 is probably second spot. I would have thought, depending on how the season goes. Um, just quickly before we go into Woods, what are your thoughts? Do you guys see? is definitely a top four team um could they potentially go all the way this year a couple of things here quickly mookie then i'll throw over to you i had them 17 and 11 very close mm -hmm. yep. the big hole for me you have joe luala chul ariel hakpori two-headed monster right yep. now we've got marcus lee who was playing almost a share role with will magne last year coming back to play heavy minutes robler has retired more times than shahid afridi right he's coming back <laughs> he's coming back to play again he's dusting off some cobwebs i'm a bit concerned about that um five-man rotation just a little mm. bit you know injury there there could be problems that's one thing to look out for but yeah top 14. yeah top 14 for me um the, the same concerns though that that two-headed monster the loss of those guys can't be underestimated yeah. um marcus lee i love him as a player but he's he's more of a yeah like a, a marcus canby of, yeah. of the and mm. he's, he's a lob catcher he's a shot blocker and he had a great go in Melbourne last time but you look at the you know Delhi Golding um even Shaili who who's had all the concussion issues they've got an extra year on their legs now um I'll never doubt Delhi and and you know because he, he'll keep on getting better if he has to and we know bubbles can pull out at any time whatever he needs to pull out uh but 
you have to take into account those things. Eventually, injury tolls do uh, to hit people, and uh, that's something that might pull them back a little bit. But they are just things that make me say, "Will are they as strong a, a title threat?" But they're certainly a top four team for me. Certainly, one of the best coaches in the NBL as well. So that's you know yeah. the, the um, longevity that they've had, you know, with the coach and everything else like that. So yeah, looking forward just, to see just, how they just go. Just one thing I want to mm. quickly mention, just to talk about that center rotation, Marcus Lee had Isaac Humphries in Melbourne that year, right? Next year, he had mm. Will Magne. Now Ooh. he has Rob Lowe. So there's a lot more responsibility he's got to take on in this. Ooh. He's still got Jack White as well. Jack White can play the 4-5 as well. So, yeah. 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 And, and, and even yeah, yeah. Bowen might have to at times as yeah, well. Yeah, for sure. But, for sure. but Lee, Lee and Lowe sounds great, doesn't it? Yeah, it does. Nice, nice. All right, well, that was fun. Um, So, look, we've done the Queensland teams. We've done the two Melbourne teams now. So it's going to go to a different state now. Woods, you're going to cover off the Illawarra Hawks for us. Uh, Yeah, bring it up. Yeah, sounds good. All right, Mooks, do you want to maybe talk us through this one before Woody gets going? Yeah, so contracted players who are back. We've got Dan Greeter, Hyung, Hyung (laughs) Jumsley. Yeah, I should get that right. Uh, Lockie Olbrick, who was fantastic, Luca Yates, Mason Peatling, who's a, who's a good hard-nosed player, Sam Froling, Todd Blanchfield, Will Hickey, Tyler Harvey, and Wani Swakalubuluk, and, of course, Justin Tatum coming back after the story that was last season as the coach. And incoming, Trey Kell III is coming from Adelaide. Um, big signing, and, and I'd be interested to hear your, your take on that, Woods. Um, Departing, AJ Johnson getting to the Milwaukee Bucks, getting drafted. Great story there. But Wiley Bales and Woods, you, you broke the news to me that he's off to Switzerland after yes. I spotted he and uh, Will Hickey at, down at Redfern the other day. Um, Gary Clark, who, of course, Illawarra made a good crack out, according to all reports, at trying to keep, and he, he's such a, a key part of last season's success for them. Uh, and Justin Robinson outgoing as well. So... What are, you, what are your thoughts on how this team looks for the season yeah. ahead? So, yeah, I think um, maybe it's worth starting with Trey Kell, right? Um, well, let me, let me just say, Tatum wanted to bring these guys back. We know he was saying at the end of last season, let, let's bring back this nucleus, right? And he's brought back 11 players from that roster. So him having a full training camp with this team, how much a difference is it going to make, right? Maybe I'll just quickly ask you guys that question. I think it's huge having, you know, players that he's sort of, had a part in sort of, you know, playing for that last year. I can see there's still a, a roster spot, though. Woods will probably talk about that, so potentially an import yep, or I've a next star, yeah, maybe. Yeah, but that, yeah. no, I think that's um, – and, look, he's apparently so excited to be back. I think he got back and he was already, you know, the, the practice court a couple of hours after landing. Um, so I think that's going to be great, having that team and, you know, having the whole preseason and everything under him. So looking looking forward to see how they go. Yeah, awesome. Yeah, I, I think there is a big element in that, him getting to inject his systems. But I'd also say there's there's a bit of an adrenaline bump loss that you, you incur through them not getting that excitement of the, the new coach comes in, we've overcome all the problems we've had, it's all fresh and new, and teams are not ready for us and the stuff that Justin Tatum brings in. Now the other teams have had an off-season to, to look at some tape work out what they're doing, and they don't have that same adrenaline rush. So maybe the sugar hit has the come down. Now, that's a fair point. And I guess some of the... You talked about Gary Clark needing to be replaced. The other one, Justin Robinson, who's underrated. Sure, he had some bad games last year, but he was a great leader in that locker room. Really good fit for the system. So bringing in Trey Kell, I think a blessing in disguise was Scott Ninnis last year in Adelaide saying, here, have the keys to the offense, Trey. You know, play some point guard. I trust you, man. So we saw what Trey Kell was able to do with the ball in his hands last year. He was... You know, t- you know, all star five quality player for the last ten games. You know, um, all NBL first team quality he was playing at. So if he can come back into training camp, fit, uh, fit in with the other players, and and start off at, as the point guard, and really um, learn the sets, the offense, and the different principles that Coach Tatum is trying to uh, implement, then uh, I think he's going to be a huge upgrade on on Justin Robinson, right? And he's going to mm-hmm. be able to rebound from really well from that point guard position, which is terrific, right? So. Really excited. Um, Gary Clark. Now, that, that is one that is going to be very, very difficult to replace. I mean, the reason Illawarra did so well last year was his ability to lead. You know, he was almost a coach. He was the assistant coach, basically, to Tatum, right? He was his golfing buddy, his right-hand man, you know, Robin to his Batman. So I think that dynamic that those two created and the culture those two were building in Illawarra um, 
a big part of it was those two. So not having Gary Clark in that environment anymore is, is not going to be easy to replace. Having said that, and to your to your point, Robbie, they are actually trialing out a lot of import, a few different import power forwards to try and fill that force. Got any spot. names for us, Woods, or any scoops? Yeah, I got. I saw one. Um, Olgan said something on Twitter today, but some guy. Yeah, did you see that, Mookie? No, I can't remember. I didn't see it. Didn't see it. Anyway, there's a few guys they're trying out for for that position. But what 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 I wanted to ask you guys about is a, a an interesting situation that is going to unfold here with Tyler Harvey going to become naturalized in the next two, three months, right? So in the back half of this season, they're going to have another import spot free up. So is there food for thought? Maybe we cannot replace Gary Clark like, like for like. So maybe we'll just, you know, ride the wave for the next couple of months till Tyler Harvey becomes naturalized and we'll bring in two imports to, to make up for... Can you massively rely on that happening? Woods, given what we've seen with Bryce Cotton, he's hopefully got a different immigration lawyer over there in, in the gong there. But, yeah, I don't know. I mean, it might be something they've got pencilled in, but I don't think you can guarantee that that'll happen and they'll just eventually be able to get an import straight away. And it, it might, might depend on finances for them as well, right? Yeah, it, you've, you've got to have those contingency and backup plans and all those things. But the question, I guess, as well is, yeah, what sort of cash do... Or I have to shell out for those moves. It's, it's one thing to have salary cap flexibility, but not everyone can be the Sydney Kings, Robbie, and, and just... Uh, the Kings could chuck on a couple of million or two, couldn't they? Jeez. You guys, isn't Michael Frazier still in Hill Noir? <laughs> Possibly, he could be, right? So he's someone that can potentially come in straight away, you're right, actually. Yeah. You're just hanging out there all last year, right? <laughs> Maybe Jason <laughs> Taylor can come over, you know? Yeah. They, they might find a spot for him then. Um... All right, so look, the one guy that I really want to talk about who I believe is going to be able to take his game to the next level, and and, and look, you mentioned earlier, is Lockie Albrecht, you know? Yeah. He came in bright-eyed and bushy-tailed. He would have learned a lot last season, right? Um, and I think this is the season that he's going to really grow and, and show. Hey, Woods, didn't I have him down be. for about three award-winning categories last year? Lockie I, think, I think it was probably one season early, Robbie. Mm, you know, maybe, being your first professional maybe. gig, um, yeah. it takes a while to get accustomed to playing with grown men and stuff. That one year, he started to show throughout the season what what could eventuate and, and what kind of player he could grow into. Right, Lockie? Mm. Oh, yeah, absolutely. And then in the off-season in NBL 1, yep. what he's been able to do as well. So, yep. yeah, he, he's he's... I see him like this uh, massive guard. The way he runs, he, he's got that ability to just bolt up and down the floor like a gazelle, but just finish with such amazing regularity. And he's, he's like a, a super layup guy. He's not like a high flying dunker, but he's just one of those guys who can always manufacture a shot in traffic. So um, he, he's got the, the style to just over a very long time be very successful and, and he's got a great attitude and motor as well so mm. I, I only expect him to keep on going up and up each season yep yep no nah, I agree and finally Tyler Harvey not often you see an import spend half a decade in the one club in Australia right he loves the city he's become you know a big part of the culture there in, in Illawarra you guys happy to see him come back for another year I like the way he goes about it. I mean, you could probably pencil him in for, what, two game winners, I would have thought, from the season and some ridiculous you know, distance from the ring there. So I know he's got some detractors there, but I, I like the way he plays. Um, you know, I like always like watching those lefty sort of guards as well. But, yeah, he's the heart and soul of that team now, isn't he? And, and yeah, I'm sure he'll probably have another solid season. Yep. I'm really yeah. excited to, to, to also see the development that, uh, you know, uh, we saw last year from uh, Dave O'Hickey, right? Uh, mm-hmm. Coming in after what he did last year. And look, you can speak about Mookie or Robbie, you can both speak about his NBL1 exploits, right? Well, he, so, sh- he should have been the MVP of the NBL1. Eh? So that's what I'm going to say, Mookie. Not sure if you would have voted him uh, in your commentary role, but I thought he was clearly the best player. Yeah. I agree. Yeah. At both ends of the court, his defense was ridiculous, honestly. Yeah, I think he's. Um, and we've said before, with some of these guys playing in this NBL1 in the offseason, seems to really help him. I think that's going to. You'll come. It's... Robbie's just cut out. Okay, you cut out for a bit, Robbie. Oh, I was just singing um, Dave O'Hickey's praises. But um, no, I was just going to say, like, we've seen guys in that NBL 1 that have really fired and then come into the season that's really helped them. So I'm excited to see how he goes. Potentially even could start for them or certainly play big minutes off the bench, I reckon. Yeah, definitely. You look at that guard rotation, you've got Kel, Harvey, and then Hickey, who could probably play, you know, play a bit of one, a bit of two. So yeah. um, we're going to do our awards 
later, right? Oh, and I've got Hickey down for one of maybe two awards this year, potentially. For, nice. Um, so where are they finishing, Woods? I've got 17 and 11, exactly the same Ooh, as Melbourne. 17, okay, that's yep. pretty high, yeah. I mean, look, I'll probably say 15 and 13. So 17 and 11, that's definitely top four, right? You're saying yeah, I'm that? very, very impressed with them. Uh, the fact that... Uh, training camp is 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 going to be there for Coach Tatum. I also think that people will want to come play for him. So whoever comes to replace Gary Clark is going to be a quality, uh, you know, quality import. Um, and he's a great coach. So yeah, I'll say fifth for me. I'd say probably yeah, fifteen and thirteen. But yeah, it depends on how they do fill up this last roster spot. If they do get an import or a next star, but certainly an exciting team to watch. Mm. Yeah, in in that range, I, I, I'm thinking more fifth towards sixth. Um, yeah, I, I don't see them as a top four team. Appreciate that, Woods. So, look, we're exactly halfway through these NBL team previews now. It's been fun. So, the ones we've got to go, of course, are our team, Sydney and Perth, and we've also got Adelaide, New Zealand, and Tassie. Tasmania. Yeah, so... We'll certainly get those in the coming weeks and have some um, special guests. So, look, I know we wanted to get to, we will get to Classic Pack shortly. Just wanted to quickly go through just two quick hits that I've sort of picked out there. Um, obviously, we've got to get some Wildcats to talk in there, so let's start off with that. So, of course, um, Mickey, of course. Absolutely, right? So, look, I want to talk about the new import news. Um, really excited with this. So, this is the news, of course, that Perth um, signed former NBA player Dylan Windler there. So, this is one that I'm particularly pleased about as Woods and I actually got to see this guy play live in March for our Atlanta Hawks. Um, he was really impressive. I think the first game we saw him play against Mookie's Blazers, he might have had 16 points, um, was playing good D, certainly a good shooter. Um, look, Windler comes in with over 100 games of NBA experience um, after being drafted by the Cavs in the first round of the 2019 NBA draft. Um, he's a lefty with a great outside shot. Um, he's also a very solid rebounder. Um, I think he might have had 30-odd rebounds in a G League game. Um, he's also got sneaky athleticism, which, of course, that's code for a white guy that can actually get off the ground a little bit there. Um, maybe I'll start with you, Woods. We obviously saw him firsthand, and I know we're kind of a little bit like, oh, Dylan Windler, what's going on here? And we're both impressed, but how do you think he can help my Wildcats? Rebounding straight away, right? We know what you guys need. You need to get on the glass a little bit better, and 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 you know get get uh, you know improve in that area. And I think Dylan Windler is averaging a double double in college. You know he's a very very good rebounder at his position. Um, you know he he brings that that uh, unique skill set of being a great rebounder and being able to knock down the outside shot, which is going to help you guys. So. Yeah. Here's a trivia question. He went to Belmont um, College in the US. There's one other NBL import that went to the same college. Does anyone know who that is? Floyd de Vries? No, we've mentioned his name today. No, playing now. Playing Ian, now. Ian Clark. Ian Clark, correct. Yeah, quite a few years apart there. Nice, nice on them, Luke's, but um, yeah, two also, random players Also worth, worth noting that Dylan Windler, Delhi, really good friends, three seasons together at Cleveland. Mm. So uh, I'm sure he would have. You know, send a quick text to Delhi to find out a little bit about what this league is, is like before. Hey, Woods, I've got to say I'm pleased. You know, I haven't been entirely happy with some of the Wildcats imports. I felt we've gone a little bit cheap these last few years or so on. Really excited about this one. Like, I was genuinely thrilled when I found out this news um, last Friday there. I like a lefty. I love the way this guy shoots. And the fact that, you know, he can play defense and rebounding, which is probably our biggest need there. Really excited to get him. Um even more looking forward to this blitz that's going to be on you know next weekend just to see how he sort of fits in there he's a, a sure thing started there they'll start off with that front line with um do little um windler and, and kiana Pin kiana pinder which is nice. a pretty good trio there i would have thought Ooh. so yeah so no looking forward to that and um the final one I've got for you in this quick hits, um, uh, Mookie, is a, a bit of a Portland one there. So um, Dame Lillard this week was um, quoted on a podcast, I think it was. So I'm going to read out a quote. I know Woody enjoyed reading quotes last week, and I felt a bit jealous there. So um, they asked him about his combination in Portland when he played with LaMarcus Aldridge. Um, so Lillard's uh, words were, if he would have never went to San Antonio, would it, we would have won at least once already. I would have come into my own, but he was that good. Um so, Mookie, I'll throw it to you. What do you think about this statement from Dame? Do you agree, disagree, and do you think they could have won a chip if um, LaMarcus had a state there? I don't disagree with it. Um, it's something that I said for a long time. I, I, I felt like the thing the Blazers always lacked in the Lillard slash McCollum era was a, a Ford who could really dominate or, or at least play a significant role. And LaMarcus Aldridge was the perfect prototype of what they needed. Um and you know, getting getting the likes of of Grant in in more recent years 
just didn't cut it as that guy. It was kind of a taste of what could have been if they kept Lamarcus. And, and I was really disappointed when he left. Lamarcus Aldridge, not only was he from that era that I really loved that I talked about earlier, but he, he was always just that super cool cat who, who just mm. did his thing, had this immense confidence, did it in, in a really uh, efficient way. Um, had that awesome mid-range jump shot with a unique style. And there, there are not many guys around the NBA who did what he did for the number of years that he did it for. And and just with that level of the guy who comes on the court and you're like, oh, we've got him, we're, we're fine. So you pair that with Lillard in his prime because Lillard in his prime, I always say, you know, totally underestimated because of the, the market he's in, he's been in and the 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 lack of support he had with those high level players around him because you know the type of numbers and the three point range he had the dominance for his size is up there with all the all the great players and he, he just didn't have a golden state warriors system or or a team full of, of all stars to have a guy like cj mccollum who alongside him who kind of you know good play to have alongside him not a superstar and not um complementary really to his skill set was doing him a disservice and you know Lillard did uh, had so much loyalty to stick around as he did LaMarcus Aldridge I always thought would, that was a real what if for me 100% no, I agree with what, with what Dame's saying if the two of those guys could have stayed healthy and been on that team man that was as, as good a dynamic duo as I, I think you had in the league people seem to have really forgotten about LaMarcus as well we don't mm. sort of see his name mentioned I know he had like I don't know off the top of my head how many all-star appearances he had it must have been like you know like more than five right I would have thought easily um, I would think something like he, he got yeah. um, he got ripped off on some as well and obviously but there was he, a lot of good forwards in the west as well wasn't there at that time maybe Woods you can fact seven, check that for us how many seven, seven okay seven well, yeah that's that just shows you how good the guy was right guys, we're never yeah. going to see a 17 foot mid-range elbow six foot ten jump shooter in, this, in the NBA anymore oh, are we going to it's good it's on Yekera on Yekera Kongu might develop yeah, that it's yeah. unlikely we're going to see someone who does it the bread and butter like mm. Marcus oh, he was automatic for that yeah, range. Like, yeah. yeah. Definitely, well definitely. listen to these stats right 19.1 points per game 8.1 rebounds a game 1.1 blocks a game 49 percent from the field 81 uh, percent from the stripe that that those sorts of numbers Ridiculous. and to do it for as long as he did mm. and you know and to average slightly better the number the numbers than those in the playoffs as well um you know he, he wasn't a guy to big note himself in portland and then in san antonio as well he, he played like a role player he, he played that tim duncan-esque sort of role player quiet big man role and he didn't have the personality to become a big star, but certainly... And Mooks, imagine him now as well with that three-point game, the way that the game's played. I mean, he had a very yeah. nice-looking shot. He would have certainly extended that range a lot more and, and utilised it for their size. Well, he did in yeah. his final years a little he bit, did. didn't he? Yeah, yeah, but even more so now if he played. But yeah. nice, nice. I thought that was an interesting one. I thought we'd, we'd finish off the, the quick hits with a bit of a Portland um, section. But, yes, very excited about Dylan um, Windler there, Woods. I'll certainly be buying um, a jersey as soon as that's available there. I'm looking forward to seeing him there, so... Shades mm. of Chris Gent. Oh, uh, maybe. Uh, Hopefully without the, the bad temper there. But, yeah, let's <laughs> – exactly. Let's hope you can do some of those things that old Gent did there. So, nice. All right, Woods. Well, after the little bit of a disaster of classic packs last week with that dodgy pack that we got, I know you've got something cool for us this week. So, let's um, let's get through that. And see I'd like to apologise about that college pack. We will never do one again. <laughs> <laughs> That's pretty ordinary. Sorry yeah. to our audience. I got the NBA Jam sessions, the long ones. Giant pack. Now, I don't have any of the sleeves to put them in. You said you had a, you found a I few will, of them, right? Yeah, to find out. some. Yep, yeah, yep. Right. Cool, thanks, bro. So what year are these, Woods? 94, 95. Okay, you remember these, right, Mooks? The giant ones oh, that you never, never really fit in the plastic sleeves. These are good. Yeah, nice, um, nice quality cards. Oh. Yeah. And just that that whole jam session year. I mean, we had uh, the they jam, came out here, they? jam yeah. session came here. And, yep. Yep, it was just uh, they were really trying to bring that hip-hop vibe, mix, yep, crossing sure. over those things with the NBA at that time. Mm-hmm. My son recently graduated college and turned pro. I'm most known for my time probably with the LA Clippers, although I had my oh, most Ron success with the Bulls. Nice. nice. I've got that jersey I, sitting in the cupboard right next to me as well. I'll I asked, I yeah, asked fire, the coach, fire. don't put Elo on Mike. I got Mike. <laughs> <laughs> he would have said it with a bit of a stutter as well, but yeah, the Ohio Flyer was awesome, wasn't he? Show us the back of those woods so we can see the 
Yeah, they're a quality card. You've got room for all those stats, you know. Some of the cards yeah. now don't have all that height, weight and stuff, which I always like learning awesome, as a kid man. back in the day. Yeah, so, no, no, they're, they're nice. Things, they don't have yeah. now a lot of them. Okay? They're really basic yeah. on the back of them. But, yeah, no, that's oh, a The kids' attention card. spans don't last long. <laughs> that's it. Absolutely. So who, who was, who was yeah. the 610 40 played alongside him with the Clippers? Uh, Lloyd Charles. Charles Smith. Smith. Just don't no, say that right. Manning guy. Yeah. That's who I was referring don't to. Don't want to. Sorry. Oh, Danny Manning. Oh, Danny Manning. <laughs> <laughs> Had to do it. Yeah. Nice. That was Von Harper, Charles Smith, Mark Jackson, yeah, I, I Danny Manning. Mm. I love that lineup. That yeah. was, Joe that's Wolf. promised to. Yeah. <laughs> now you're really rich. Yeah. 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 Well, uh, Stanley Roberts, maybe? Terry Deher. Yeah. 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 Tony Mazzard. Yeah, Terry Deher. Yes. All right. I've got Phoenix Suns. Scoring machine played for the Lakers as well, but I Didn't loved him in Phoenix. Cedric, the 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 <laughs> that's cool. And like I said, Woods, I think we're only going to get quality players in these. Like, I don't think there was a massive set there, so it was more the, the good players. And I uh, like this already. Okay, I'm not David the singer, but I am from the Orlando Magic. Oh. the great musician is David who. Oh, I know who this is. I'll leave this to Mookie, though, because otherwise Woody's going to accuse me of hogging it. Has he got a three-letter first name? Oh, words? I know, I know, I know. Mr. Bowie. No, not Sam Bowie. Oh, no. no. Oh, Orlando no, Magic. It's, uh, no, Anthony. it's um, Anthony Bowie. Anthony Bowie. Yeah. Nice, that's a nice <laughs> yeah. close-up card. Is that a bit of, bit of horn a sec behind as well? <clears throat> a bit of horny yes. in the background? Horny yeah. for a sec, yeah. <laughs> maybe nice. David Benoit's arm. <laughs> nice. Love David Benoit. That's a blast from the past. Okay, this guy's <laughs> son played for the Sydney Kings about 15 years ago. Portland Trial Blazers. Be, oh, I'll leave this one for Mooks. Is this Mr. Grant? Yes. Which one? Jirai. Well, I'm sorry, this one is Harvey. Harvey Grant it is. Yeah. I would expect nothing less from you. Yeah, yeah, very nice. They were identical twins, right? Um, Horace and Harvey, is that right? I believe so. Identical twins? I believe so. Yeah. We're, 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 I always get confused with so that's the, a what very it similar jersey to the one you're rocking, isn't it? Very similar. It is, yeah. They kind of did a different uh, striping around, yeah, the, uh, yeah. around the port. What can you tell us about Harvey Grant, Woods? Um, I can say that... Washington Wizards, I remember him there. Yeah, for a while, Washington, but, yeah. Portland. Um, mm. You know, in his best season, he averaged 18.2 points per game, oh. you know? So, in a low he's, score, he's more than was pretty good. Yeah, yeah, he, yeah definitely. Yeah. Um, Wasn't he, the rebounder that Horace was, though. Yeah, and I, I, you mentioned as well his other son played for Portland as well. Yeah, well, right? well, he had three sons that played, I believe. Mm, there's yeah. one that played for Chicago yeah, as well, wasn't there? Yeah, yeah, the yeah. Guard. but he yeah. just. Did, but, just didn't get the uh, NBA Jam cameo with the. There was Jeremy, Jerine, and Jerry. Mm, That's bit it. Of a bit of a Very theme there. Yeah. 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 Um, okay. I mean, from one of the most famous basketball families ever, his father was a polarizing figure with the San Francisco Warriors in the 70s, won a championship after coming from the ABA. Um, John Barry. John yeah. Barry. In a dunk competition. Oh, yeah, Brent Barry was. Yeah, his brother yeah. was. His Former brother Atlanta Hawkins. Speaking of another guy whose brother played in the yeah. NBL as well, right? Yeah, yep. There's a bit of another theme the going on here. Well. Scooter. Yeah. yeah. Nice. Scooter He's got that jersey pretty so pretty was, much tucked in. So, so there was, was Scooter, and then there was the other one who played for the Kings as well, wasn't there? Uh, um, so, so Scooter uh, played for South East Melbourne, is that right? Yeah. The other Kings. Yeah, 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 yeah. I know what you're talking about. Um, um, oh, he played for like six games and got cut, didn't he? Yeah, in that yeah. season where we had 10 imports. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I know what you're talking about. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Only two of them played in the NBA. It was um, Brent. Yeah, Scooter never made it, did he? Yeah, it was just no. Brent Barry. It, it was Brent this, John. Uh, yeah, John was a journeyman for sure. Drew Barry. Drew, yeah. yeah. Talent family for sure. Jeez, four pros. Yeah. yeah. Um, okay, Philadelphia 76ers, six foot nine forward, was involved in a very. Was involved in a trade with the Phoenix Suns, if memory serves me right. Yeah? Tim Perry? No, Tim Perry, number 23. Tim Perry, am I right? Another, yeah, he yeah, was. He was in the Barkley trade. Barkley trade, yes. Another guy that was in the dunk comp as well in, in one of those years. He was definitely a high flyer. We, we've actually talked about this trade on a previous mm. podcast with Have the three right. Yeah, awesome. And I've got yeah. a Hersey Hawkins jersey in that same style as well. I still have a Hawkins jersey. All right, all right, all right. All right. The he's first excited. man that could play a lot of positions, man. Hanging with Mr. Cooper. He's like, yo, I'm going to go see Billy O. I'm going to go see Billy O. Oh, I'm going to play man. for the Warriors. Billy Owens, nice. Billy Owens. One of my favourites, Woods. Another player I've featured on the show, yeah. 
I, I got to tell you guys, every time I see a number thirty Warriors, yeah, team, I know I've seen the same too. Because I've got a couple of his jerseys, and I thought, well, that out, people will be like, oh, who's this guy with the bandwagon car? Well, no, it's a, a Billy Owens champion Golden State jersey, but yeah, no, he was great. I'll tell you something. When you first wore a Billy Owens jersey on this show, Robbie, mm. I posted it on Twitter, and Mookie jumped on and he made a comment about it. Was it you who made that comment? He said, um, first guy who could play guard multiple positions. I think it was you. It might have been you, right? So. Interesting. Yeah. Um, yeah. All right. Dunk contest and three point shootout, this guy was in. Um, this is his bullets card, played for the Phoenix Suns. Uh, Rexy. Rex Chapman. Nice. Great. One of the greats of Twitter. Yeah, yeah definitely. Yeah. He's, he's interesting, isn't he? Yeah. Yeah. Um, I have worn this guy's jersey on the show. One of the great Duke point guards uh, to play under Coach K. Bobby. The great man himself. Bobby Hurley. Bobby Hurley. Hey. Oh, Bobby Hurley. That's a nice pack, terrible. isn't it? That's a very yeah. nice pack. Uh, that, that's a, he's a real blast for the past player due to his career being cut off the way it was. With that Him and like guys like Jay Williams as well, right? There's kind of those what-if yeah. careers if they hadn't had those accidents. Yeah. 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 I mean, you talk sure. about Bobby Hurley in, in, in the annals of college basketball. He's one of the greatest ever point guards, right? So um, mm, absolutely. it was, it was uh, mm. sad that it didn't, he didn't go on. All right. Um, I'm not short, but I am. From Miami, and I am? Uh, John Long. Grant Long. Grant, Grant Long. Another former yeah. Hawks. I've got yeah. Grant Long and John Barry. Yeah. I, was, I liked Grant Long back in the day. Was he with yeah. Blazer as well, I think, as well, Mookie, right? Uh, he was for a short, yeah. short time, yeah. yeah. In that same sort of uh, Abdul Rahim sort of period. Mm. I've got two of the best point guards of 1995. In fact, this first one, New York City's finest. I've pulled this card so many times. He's one of my favorite little guys of all time. Left-hander. Oh, had his struggles. Had his struggles with alcoholism lately, and you feel for him. Mookie? Kenny Anderson. Oh, sorry, I wasn't. Yeah. <laughs> Mr. Really Chibs. Mr. Yeah, Mr. Chibs. I like it. Yeah. Great documentary. Oh, he's going up for the jam there, too. All right. Yeah. <laughs> now, leave this one for Mookie, right? Okay. Memphis, all right, all right, all right. From Memphis, Tennessee. Right? Another guy who revolutionized what a point guard was supposed to look like and how he was supposed to play. If it wasn't for injuries, he would have gone down as one of the greatest who have ever played the game. I'm talking about who? Uh, six foot seven. Yep. Orlando Magic. Yep. Phoenix Suns. Anthony, pretty as a penny, Hardaway. <laughs> yes. And uh, wow. short stints wow. in New That's... York. And... Like, you talk about guys of that era, like you say, Bobby Hurley, like you, you just associate them with that era. Penny Hardaway's in there, along with like Larry Johnson, and yeah, you know, the guys just mm. peaked in that in that period. Kenny Anderson, R- Penny Hardaway, Rex that pack out woods. That's a cracker, yeah. Yeah, um, Rex Chapman, Billy Owens, Tim Perry, John Barry, Harvey Grant, Anthony Bowie, Cedric Savalas, and Ron Harper. Nice. I reckon I've got eight of those jerseys, honestly. <laughs> eight of those guys jerseys that's pretty impressive yeah no that was a great pack um hopefully that redeems ourselves for that pack we had last week right woods i think that went pretty well nice one Absolutely. all right we well, really appreciate it boys we'll just get to the outro now um so as i mentioned at the start of the show please um remember to like rate and subscribe on youtube or wherever you listen to your podcasts uh, we can be followed on x at throwbacks hoops um, Instagram, throwback.hoops, and our email address is throwbackhoopspodcast at gmail.com. Um, appreciate any um, support and assistance anyone can give us via Patreon there. Um, please search Throwback Hoops on there, and we um, appreciate um, any pledges and donations there. Um, maybe I'll throw it to yourself, Mookie. Where can people uh, find you? Uh, the best one is on X, or some people used to know it as Twitter, as at a stern warning. Appreciate that, mate. And look, I'll say on behalf of Woods as well, just loved having you back. Um, it's the fourth. It definitely won't be the last. You're going to get a, a permanent invite there as long as you're happy to come on. Um, I will need to get another Portland jersey. I've got a little bit of time now before you come on next just to get another random one, maybe a Detlef Strength, maybe a Harvey Grant. Who knows? We'll see what I can find out nice, there. Um, nice. But no, it's been great having you on. Really appreciate um, you know, all the, the homework, everything you did on the, the South East Phoenix there. Um, Maybe Woods, I'll go to you for a bit of a final word there. What's um, What are you sort of looking forward to with this NBL season coming up? How are you feeling? Yeah, really excited. You know, I mentioned earlier that uh, Mookie and I are going Friday night to the first uh, preseason game uh, versus the New Zealand New Zealand Breakers we're playing Friday, right? It Woods? is, yep. yeah. So yeah. I'm, I'm excited. And I think this time of year is always a, you know exciting for all basketball fans in Australia. Set up your super coach team, you know, start talking about team previews and everything. Um 
Yeah. Great time of year, man. Really excited. Yeah, right. really appreciate it. Well, it's been great catching up with you boys. Um, really want to thank everyone's uh, support and for tuning in. Um, see you next week. Peace out. Thanks, Mookie. Thank you, guys. Peace.